Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me here in Sydney, Australia. We are somewhere near Cottage Point, which is a part of Karingai Chase National Park. I'm currently sitting in the rain. <laughs> I've got an umbrella popped over the camera. It's over the iPad and the iPhone. I'm just going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do it nice and quickly. I kind of am motivated to be quick because of the rain. So today we're going to talk about Saturn and Jupiter and all 12 signs. Thank you to those of you who've been so kind to put the little timestamps below. I'm really pressed for time at the moment, so I really appreciate when one of you does that. So thank you very much for putting the timestamps below. Today we're going to look at this all-important conjunction which is in our sky at the moment and it will be around until April, early April. Okay, and I wanted to concentrate on a very specific and a very narrow feature of these two getting together. There's lots of different meanings with Saturn and Jupiter coming together, lots and lots of different meanings. I'm na zeroing in, narrowing it down to this one tiny little facet which is cognitive dissonance. So why cognitive dissonance? Why do I want to talk about this? What is cognitive dissonance? There are lots of different examples of what this is. I was thinking about how it's played out in my life. One of them is very, very simple. I love drinking coffee, but I know it's bad for me, right? And uh, I've had to quit coffee this year. I had some big health challenges and that was an important thing that I did. It was a much loved addiction of mine that I had to give up. But, you know, I, I love coffee, right? Cognitive dissonance, how, how does it work? So I really love drinking coffee. All my beliefs are around the love of coffee and the artistry and the culture and the history and all the wonderful things associated with it. But the reality of coffee, the drinking of it every day, was kind of rinsing my body of vital minerals, right? And it's not good for my body. It might be very good for some people. And what I would do is I'd read all these articles that would say coffee is very good for you and it reduces the onset of Alzheimer's. And I'd read all these things. I also would just have one a day. So, you know, I was only having a very small amount. And I justified it by eating lots of veggies and, you know, um, all that kind of thing. So this is cognitive dissonance. This is an example of that. Are there some other examples? There are lots of examples playing out in our collective right now. So let's say you've liked someone for a while, they're your friend, you really like them, you think, oh, that's a cool person. And then you discover, oh my God, they voted for blah, blah. And you go, oh no, but you still like that person. Okay, that's cognitive dissonance, right? If you're in integrity, you find out that they voted for blah, blah, you don't like it, you cut them out of your life, boom, sweet, done, nice and easy, right? No cognitive dissonance there. But what if you still like them? And what if you keep going back, okay? So that's a good example of cognitive dissonance. That's one where it's uncomfortable, right? Another example that popped into my mind today, I'm just looking, can you see the rain? I can feel the rain. I'm, gonna, I'm keeping going, carrying on, keep calm and carry on. I'm gonna do the English thing and stay with it. Right, what's another example? So this morning I was brushing my teeth and I thought of this song uh, by Bobby Caldwell. A friend of mine a long time ago introduced me to it. He loved this song and then I started to love this song. And it's um, What You Won't Do For Love, something like that. I listened to it for years. And then one day I thought, let me check him out. I'm gonna see what film clip or I don't know, I just put it into YouTube, I wanted to see. And I had the shock of my life when I discovered, oh my God, this singer who I always visualized as being, I first I visualized him definitely as being black and sort of a bigger, kind of larger than life kind of guy. I don't know, that's how I pictured him. And then I see the video clip and he's a skinny white guy. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, there's no way. How does that even work? And I was so happy to read the comments on that video because somebody else wrote and said, and a lot of black people wrote actually and thought, I seriously thought this guy was black. And they're like, this, how, how is this? Like it's tripping me out, right? And um, yeah, so I mean, that's another example, right? Of cognitive dissonance. So why am I saying, and let's have a look, let's have a look at the dictionary definition while we're here. 
you know, we've got a state in which there is a difference between your experiences or behavior and your beliefs about what is true. So how does that relate to Saturn and Jupiter? Well, let's take a look at that first statement, a state in which there is a difference between your experiences or behavior, right? So your experiences or behavior, that's Saturn. And then we've got, and your beliefs about what is true, that's Jupiter. All right, so now this is classic Saturn-Jupiter territory. I also thought about that phrase by F. Scott Fitzgerald, who said, now nah, I'm pulling this out of my mind, I'm going to have to remember this. He said something like, it's the sign of a first-rate intelligence when you can hold two contradictory beliefs in the mind at the same time and it causes you no discomfort. It's something like that, okay? And I thought to myself this morning before coming out here, I thought, let me take a look. I'll plug him into the astrological system. I'll see, did he have Saturn-Jupiter conjunct anywhere? And sure enough, he did. He had it in the 10th house in his D60. So I was like, wow, okay, this is for real. So, and I'm sure there'll be other instances of this that I'll be able to find, but that quote is, is summing it up perfectly. So let's take a look at what this means for you. Now, how are we doing? Six minutes. I think I'm going to be able to fly through this, guys, and uh, I am going to have to pack up because it's getting quite wet out here. So, <laughs> so let's keep going. All right, so now Aries, what does this mean for you? Now, guys, you can watch your moon sign, you can watch your ascendant, but yes this is sidereal Vedic, uh, so definitely watch as much of this as, as you would like, but these are just little clues. This will be similar to the last Saturn-Pluto video I did because we are looking at the same slice of zodiac, but I'm looking at it in a context of, you know, um, cognitive dissonance. So let's take a look. Aries, until early April, if you're in a job that you don't like doing, okay, let's say you're working for Monsanto and it's really conflicting with your beliefs about, you know, how we should do life on this planet. Uh, you know, that's going to become very apparent to you uh, over the next few months. Recognize this and consciously make choices where you can. So this is definitely to do with your work. There's some cognitive dissonance happening with you and work, okay. Taurus, so until early April, it'll be obvious which gurus are connected with the truth You'll be seeing gurus and authority figures more for who and what they really are rather than your beliefs or opinions about who they are, okay? So Gemini, Gemini, until early April, taking money from a particular source might feel uncomfortable. You know there are other ways to obtain wealth and yet you're having to rely on just one, potentially. Uh, through realizing this, you can consciously make changes later. So it is about money, your dependency on money. Um, perhaps it's coming in from one particular source, but you'll start to become conscious of your feelings and your behaviors when it comes to money. Okay. And if there's any dissonance there, that is going to become apparent to you. Cancer. Until early April, you have a great opportunity to see how you can actually behave in one-on-one -on -one relationships, right? And what your how you actually behave in your one-on-one -on -one relationships and what your ideals are. How would you like relationships to actually be in your reality versus how they are in your mind? Okay, so this is very much how you relate one-on-one -on -one to people. Uh, this is quite an amazing time for you, Cancer. So Leo, until early April, how you compete at work and the actions you take should become more apparent to you. So what's actually happening in your work sphere rather than how you believe you come across to the competition. You might see yourself in a new light and you'll be able to change your beliefs or behaviors according, accordingly. So this is to do with work and it's to do with your actual actions that you take. So, you know, are you, are you really walking your talk at work? And what you believe about how others perceive you, right? Is that matching up as well? So this is a very interesting area, Leo, for you. Virgo, until early April, you'll see how you actually handle creative energy. You'll see that it really is coming through all the time, but perhaps you have habits that distract you from channeling it in the world. You can develop new habits anytime 
from now is you spot inconsistencies. This is a great time when it comes to your creativity. What are your actual habits? What are you actually doing? And what do you believe about what you're doing, right? I don't know if you can see that rain. It's coming through nice and strong. <laughs> Thank God. I'm just happy that the camera's not getting wet. All right, Libra. Until early April, you will discover how at home you are in the world and how at home you are in your actual home, right? Do you feel at home? Do you really feel at home? You'll see and feel where you belong and you might feel dissonance in the areas where you feel you don't belong. Through recognizing these dynamics, you can do something about it. Exactly. A lot's going to become conscious to you over these coming months about what is home and where do you really belong? What actions are you taking to really belong? And what opinions and beliefs do you have about your belongingness? Okay. You'll spot inconsistencies. You'll be able to do something about it. Scorpio, until early April, all your habits will be clearly seen for what they are. Yeah, amazing. So that's like... There's a lot here that you'll be able to spot and see. Um, and it's to do with habits. It's to do with daily habits. You'll also have the chance to clearly see what needs changing and where you could do with more courage in life to go after what you truly want. So with habits, I mean, what habits are building up your life? What habits are building up your career, your friendships, your relationships? What are you actually doing versus what you believe you're doing? Okay, a lot of times we live in, in our mind. So where's the cognitive dissonance? Saturn's going to show you what's going on. Sagittarius. Until early April, your actual habits around saving and managing long-term wealth will become very apparent to you. Perhaps you'd like to be richer, but are your actions in line with creating and managing that long-term wealth? So, I mean, you know, you've got these ideas and visions and big goals in your head about the finances and what you want to create and what you want to do, but what about the do, right? What about the do? Are you doing What's the actual state of the money situation? How's it working out, right? All the, you're going to see it clearly. Don't worry. You don't have to fix it all in one day. This is going to be about seeing. And we're going to have upcoming transits, so they're going to be more about doing. Capricorn, until early April, you will see yourself clearly as you actually factually are in reality. Your whole self, Capricorn. I know it's a big time, but it's brilliant. You're at the best time, you know. Um, because I think you're going to profit most from uh, this, this entire period. Uh, this is a beautiful time to see your habits without opinions or emotion. You have the chance to become more conscious than ever. And when the time is right, you'll make the ch right changes accordingly. How amazing. Aquarius, until early April, you'll see how spiritual you really are in actual reality. You'll have the chance to see and observe your habits up close and how they contribute to your spiritual growth. If you are doing things that hinder your spiritual growth, you'll see it and you'll be able to make changes further down the track. And Pisces, until early April, you'll get the chance to see your habits in relation to groups that are important to you. You'll get to see and feel where you truly belong versus the romantic ideals of where you think you belong. Where you belong will become apparent to you in terms of those bigger groups and you will be shown how to increase this sense. So guys, I hope this has been a good video for everyone. This is a short, brief video uh, of me in a new location. What I'll do is maybe we'll, um, we'll take some video of the surrounding area and I'll put it with some music and you can see where I am. So I hope this has been a good video for everyone today. Let me know in the comments below and do look out for my 2021 report. I think that'll be the last astrological type video, uh, transit type video that I do before the end of the year. So keep your eyes peeled for that. That's coming up on the channel. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi everyone. So I'll just show you where I've been sitting this whole time. You can see the beautiful location. I am on a bit of a rock here, but have a look this lovely scene we are quite high up i don't know if i can kind of zoom in on that creek or whatever hold on I'll put the umbrella down ah. 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 you can see there's water below and it's quite beautiful here
very nice and peaceful from this lovely place. All right, well, I'll see you next time. <laughs> I will keep on searching for my eyes. You can say I lost my mind. I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down. <laughs> <laughs>